Today's lecture is about various properties of colloids. The important properties of colloids are Tyndall effect, Brownian motion, color of the colloid, charge on the colloid, colligative properties and electrical properties. We will come to it one by one. First one, Tyndall effect. When a colloidal solution is kept in a dark room and a beam of light is directed at right angles to the solution, the path of the light gets illuminated. This occurs due to the scattering of light by the colloidal particles. Now, what are the conditions for Tyndall effect? Tyndall effect occurs only when the diameter of the dispersed phase and the wavelength of light used are comparable. And the refractive indices of the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium must differ from each other very much. The second point that we have is Brownian motion. Brownian motion deals with the zigzag motion of colloidal particles. This was first observed by Robert Brown when he was experimenting with pollen grains in a beaker of water. Now he explained the zigzag motion occurring due to the unbalanced bombardment of dispersed particles on the uh, molecules of the dispersion medium. Now, what are the conditions under which Brownian motion occurs? It depends on the viscosity of the dispersion medium, but never on the size of the dispersed particles. Due to the Brownian motion, you find that the solution is always having a stirring effect, which is responsible for the stability of the salts or the colloids. Now, smaller the size of the dispersed particles and lesser the viscosity, we find the Brownian motion becomes faster. Coming to the next one, that is the color of the colloid. The color of the colloid is dependent on the wavelength of the light that is scattered by the dispersed particles present in it. Color is dependent on the manner in which it is observed by the viewer. It is also dependent on the wavelength of light used. The wavelength in turn is dependent on the size and nature of the dispersed particles. For example, milk and water, when it is observed by the reflected light, it appears blue. But at the same time, when it is observed by the transmitted light, it appears red in color. Coming to the next example, gold salt appears red in color when it is in fine consistency, but as the size gradually increases, it turns to blue, purple and finally golden. The next point which we have is the charge on the colloids. Colloidal particles are either positive or negatively charged. Now, these charges are developed on the colloidal particles due to preferential adsorption of counter ions on it. Some of the examples of the charged salts are positively charged salts, you find the hydrated metallic oxides the, uh, like. Aluminium oxide, chromic oxide, and ferric oxide. Basic dye stuffs like methylene blue and hemoglobin also belongs to positive salt. Examples for negative salts are metallic salts like copper salt, gold salt, silver salt. Then the metallic sulfides also come in this category. Acidic dyes like eosin, Congo red are also examples of negatively charged salts. Starch salt, gum, gelatin, charcoal, clay, etc. are also negatively charged. 
colligative properties colligative properties are the properties which are dependent on the number of particles and not on its nature now these colloidal particles are much larger in size compared to the solute particles in solutions so the number of particles per unit area decreases when the number of particles decreases there will be a decrease in the value of the colligative properties this is the reason why colligative properties of colloids are much lesser to that of the so solutions of the same concentration the colligative properties that we are dealing here are elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point relative lowering of vapor pressure etc all these are found to have very low value when compared to the solutions of the same concentration six electrical properties of colloids under electrical properties we have to deal with what is electrophoresis electroosmosis first one electrophoresis migration of charged colloidal particles under the influence of an applied electric field that is known as electrophoresis when a colloidal solution taken in a u tube is subjected to an electric field there occurs the migration of colloidal particles towards the opposite electrode confirming the presence of charges on the colloidal particles slide shows the diagram of electrophoresis so the experimental setup has a u tube in which two electrodes are connected at the two limbs we are we have taken a colloidal solution which is negatively charged so we find that as the connections are made the colloidal particle starts drifting towards the opposite electrode confirming the presence of negative charges on it you find as time passes one limb becomes darker in color whereas the other limb becomes lighter so from this we can understand that the colloidal particles are carrying charge the next slide represents the electroosmosis process electroosmosis is the opposite process happening in electro forces here the migration of the dispersion medium occurs in the presence of an electric field so we will define what is electroosmosis the migration of dispersion medium under the action of an applied electric field is known as electroosmosis coagulation or flocculation or coalescence the process of settling of colloidal particles under the action of gravity is known as coalescence the coagulation of a lyophobic salts can be done by various methods some of them are listed below first one by electrophoresis we have discussed what is electrophoresis earlier the migration of colloidal particles under an applied electric field the second one is by mutual coagulation we are mixing two different salts of opposite charges when it undergoes mutual coagulation the next method is by boiling due to boiling additional charges get removed from the surface of the colloidal particles this occurs due to increased collisions and results in a precipitate the next method is by persistent dialysis continuous dialysis results in the removal of the electrolyte which increases the instability of the salt or it results in coagulation The next type is by adding 
electrolytes when an electrolyte is added the colloidal particles get precipitated due to neutralization of charges so today we have briefly described the important properties of colloids hope you have understood this